Today we're going to do a small video on who wrote the Gospels. Now before we begin, um, if anyone ever uh, declares that they know who wrote the Gospels, uh, they're simply lying. Um, nobody knows, uh, nor really can know, um, who actually authored uh, the four Gospels and the book of Acts, which we're going to go over as well. Um, but what I want to do first is take a look at the traditional view, the fundamentalist view, uh, th this idea that the Gospels was written by a disciple of, of Jesus or a follower of Jesus named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and we're going we're gonna to go over Acts as well. This view is built on tradition. Um, it doesn't even make this claim within the Gospels. And this, this tends to surprise a lot of Christians when I bring this up. Um, and, and I challenge you, find me anywhere in the Gospels. It doesn't matter which one you want to look at. And show me any example where the author, whoever authored it, claims to be the person that is uh, named on the uh, Gospel. Uh, for example, uh, Gospel of Mark um, or John or any of them that uh, the author says, hey, it's me, Mark, where, you know, I follow Jesus or I did this. Um, you won't find it. None of them claim to be the author that is attributed to the uh, to the gospel. And that tends to surprise a lot of Christians, but it's not there. Again, that's built on tradition, uh, mainly through the early Catholic Church, uh, which remember that time there was no Christian or Catholic. It was all Christian up until the 1500s. Um, and then the second part, which is equally as uh, surprising to most Christians, is none of them claim to be eyewitnesses. Again, go through the Gospels and find one area where they claim to be an eyewitness. You won't find it. And again, this shocks a lot of Christians to learn that nowhere in the Gospels do they claim to be the name attributed to them, nor do they ever claim to be an eyewitness. So they, 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 claim, they claim themselves, uh, or I should say the claim that the church makes about uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John being these disciples that walk around Galilee with Jesus writing stuff down over in a corner while it was happening uh, is really just based on church tradition. It's, it's not even, it wasn't even intended to be like that by the gospel authors themselves, whoever they may have been. We need a, the whole point of this video is who wrote the gospels. Now I can't tell you exactly who wrote the gospels. As I mentioned, nobody can. Um, but what we can do is I can show you who didn't write the gospels. Uh, let's go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for a second, because I really want to hammer this home to make sure you understand that these were not written by men named after them. Okay, not only do they not they, uh, not not only do they not claim to be the author that is attributed to them anywhere in the Gospels, not only do they not claim to be eyewitnesses anywhere in the Gospels, but there are many texts within the Gospels that declare that it can't be that individual. And it also has to be at a much later date. Now, here's some examples. <laughs> Look at the Gospel of Matthew, for one example. Matt, uh, whoever the author is writing this says that Jesus passed by Matthew, the tax collector. Okay? Uh, I believe this was near the temple or whatnot. And, uh, but that's besides the point. If this is written by Matthew, why would he speak in the third person here? He never says, Jesus walked past me uh, on his way through the temple. No, he says, Jesus walked by Matthew, the tax collector. Um, so it, 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 why would you speak in the third person? And all four Gospels does the same thing, um, which really gives pretty sound evidence that it's not the name that is attributed to the Gospel that is uh, writing this. We also see in many cases throughout the Gospels that the Gospels were written at a much later time than the, uh, the events being proposed, okay? Jesus died, let's say, around 30 CE, according to the Gospels. Doesn't give a year, but we can get a pretty close time frame. There are, <clears throat> there are many verses, uh, let's say, like in the Gospel of John. It says that... Um, uh, in the days of John the Baptist, talking about when John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan uh, and the ministry of Jesus was just beginning, which if Jesus died around 30, then this would have been no earlier than 28 or 29, some in that area, uh, depending on which gospel you read. But 
if this was being written by, let's say, an eyewitness, again, even though they, the Gospels never claim that, but let's say it's being written over in a corner at the time of these events going on, or even barely shortly after, you wouldn't say in the days of John the Baptist. To write something like that with that kind of language requires an ample amount of time to have elapsed. <clears throat> you're only going to write that if, if this event you're describing happened in a distant past. Uh, not uh, last Tuesday, uh, not last year, not even three or four years ago. To say in the days of John the Baptist requires an ample amount of time with that kind of language. Uh, another example is if you remember when the uh, the rumor was made up that the disciples stole the body uh, of Jesus out of the tomb. This, of course, was made up by the Romans per Gospels. And what does it say? It says that this has been believed by all Jews, all Jews, till this day. Again, the, if it's last Thursday, then this doesn't make any sense. If it's a couple of years ago, this doesn't make any sense. For to be believed, this rumor to be believed by all Jews to this day requires an ample amount of time. Just the language used requires that. So we already see that there is no claim anywhere in the Gospels to be written by men named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's never claimed that. That's just it's something the church invented. Okay, <clears throat> And they none of them ever claim to be eyewitnesses. That's, again, something the church because uh, I hear that quite often, that, well, Christianity is different because there were eyewitnesses to these events. These were uh, authors of the Gospels were eyewitnesses to the, all these things. No, they weren't. This is all decades later. And the Gospel authors don't even make the claim that they are eyewitnesses. So we see a, the, 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 uh, the names attributed to them are never claimed to be them. They're never uh, claimed to be eyewitnesses. We see that the text within the Gospels indicate heavily that an ample amount of time had to go by before the writings of the Gospels actually occurred. Now, what I want to do is, I know how the church put it. The church, when they assembled what we call the New Testament, they put the Gospels first. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then Acts, then the Epistles. That's not the way it was originally written. And this is understood by all scholars and even theologians all agree with this as well. The original first writings of the New Testament, what we call the New Testament, was the authentic epistles of Paul. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Paul authored seven of his epistles. The other ones that are attributed to him were not written by Paul. They were written at a later time by somebody else claiming to be Paul. This is very easily identified. Um, it's the same scientific uh, textual um, uh, evidence that we use today. When, when going to the text, what you can do is you can take up two books that are claimed to be the, written by the same individual. And if they're written by the same individual, they're going to be pretty consistent. And what I mean by consistent is they're going to, the way they use nouns, pronouns, verbs, the way they structure sentences, uh, their theological ideas, it's all going to be relatively the same. Very few differences. The way that uh, certain phrases they use are going to be pretty consistent. But the other epistles that are attributed to Paul, you know, such as Titus, First and Second Timothy, Second uh, Thessalonians, uh, just a, just a Ephesians, just to name uh, some of them, they're written completely different than, let's say, Romans or Galatians or First Thessalonians, which are authentic epistles of Paul. They're written completely different, uh, and when you take the scientific textual uh, analysis of these two and put them together. They're completely different authors, and we can do the same thing today with, with any writings, especially the longer the writing is, the easier it is to identify. So no theologian and scholar disagrees that Paul's writings were in the 50s. Uh, it's a debate between 1 Thessalonians or Galatians, which was a, actually his first writing, but it's really irrelevant. It was around the year 50 when Paul wrote his first epistle, and he wrote them through the 50s, uh, the latest being around 58, 59. And Paul would end up dying in the mid-60s uh, under the time of Nero. <clears throat> at the time of Paul, at the time of Paul's death even, a couple years after his last epistle, there was no New Testament writings that had occurred yet. Nothing. Nothing you find in your New Testament had been written by the time Paul died. And that's important to understand. Okay? So when you read Paul's epistles, it, it, we understand there's no other writings. 
And then you'll start to see that Paul mentions nothing. First of all, first of all, he never references any gospel. Okay, uh, never references a verse or never references it by name. Uh, never references a single event. Uh, you know, no John the Baptist, no Pontius Pilate, no High Priest Capius. You know, no virgin birth, no wilderness up for forty days, no miracle, no miraculous event, no nothing. The Passion Week, the empty tomb. None of this is Paul ever mentioned, and that's because those stories had not arrived yet. Those stories have not been invented yet to a later date, okay? I know this may sound foreign to you, but this is what it actually, the evidence shows, and it's really not even debatable. Paul's epistles were in the 50s. Um, then, then you had Hebrews, James, and Jude, which were all written right before the destruction of the temple around 69, Okay. And then your first gospel was actually Mark, written around 75. Um, and this, again, is very evident. Uh, Mark is a, the least uh, exaggerated gospel. It's the most plain Jane gospel. Um, and all the evidence shows that it was the first gospel written. Matthew was around 85, Luke 95, John 105. These are the actual years that the gospels were actually written. Um, and that's about the earliest uh, of the time frame you can go. Okay, and so that's very important to understand. Um, for example, like the virgin birth. Paul never mentions anything about the birth story of Jesus. No virgin birth, no Mary, no Joseph, no manger, no wise men, no nothing of the nativity story at all. Now that is Hebrews, James, or Jude. All of them for, did, failed to mention it at all. Even the very first gospel, Mark, fails to mention the virgin birth. And then you get to Matthew. This is why the church put Matthew as the very first book of the New Testament. <clears throat> because the church could not have all of Paul's writings, Hebrews, James, Jude, and even the Gospel of Mark, go by and fail to mention the virgin birth. Because by the year 85, this virgin birth idea had started to formulate and was mainly by Roman pressure because uh, Rome had all their demigods born of virgins. This was a very popular motif. So the Christians at this time were to inserted this idea of a virgin birth as well. Again, I know that's foreign, but this is what the evidence wholeheartedly suggests. But that's what it was actually written. Now, I want to talk about the according to, okay? Understand something. In the first, second, and, and even in third century CE, what the ancients did, if they did not know who an author was, okay, it was an anonymous author, an unknown author, that they had no idea who wrote it, but they had to give the book a title. What they would do is they would put according to, all right? So they would apply this according to, to any document or book that they didn't know who wrote it. And then they would very easily, they would just pick out disciples' names um, or followers' names that were popular as the title. That's why it's a gospel according to Mark, John, Luke, and Matthew. Okay. And when did this idea come about? This according to came about around the year 180 CE under the time of Tortillian. I'm not saying that's when they were written. Again, Mark 75, Matthew 85, Luke 95, John around 105 was when they were actually originally written. But the title, according to, came about around the year 180, uh, around the time of Tertullian, uh, because this is the very, very first time we ever hear the name of the Gospels historically was around the year 180. And we know this from other sources, mainly church fathers. Okay, we start, uh, how do we know this? In, in the, year, <clears throat> the year 95 CE, Clement of Rome, doesn't mention a single thing about any of these four Gospels. Not by name, not by any event that happened in them. Ignatius in 107 fails to mention any of these Gospels by name, nor any event from the Gospels. Uh, Polycarp in 135 also failed to mention anything from these Gospels by name or any event. Uh, Papias around that same time, a uh, huge church father, wrote many writings that never mentions Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, never mentions a single event from the Gospels, nothing, not a zilch. Justin Martyr in the year 150 wrote two apologetic letters all about Christianity and its doctrine. And he even writes what's really, really odd about Justin Martyr in 150 is he wrote uh, some things. He would call it the uh, memoirs of the apostles. 
But if you take where he calls these memoirs of the apostles, they are sayings from other books that didn't weren't canonized, uh, such as the Epistle of Barnabas or the Gospel of Thomas. Never mentions Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Never mentions a single event that happened in the four Gospels we have. And then even uh, Clement of Alexandria in 162 fails to mention any of them as well. It isn't until you get to the year 180 that these are finally identified as gospel according to Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. So that's very important to understand. So I wanted to lay this foundation before we get into who potentially wrote these gospels. Okay. Now, you have the, the fund of, you really have three different views on who wrote the Gospels. The fundamentalist view, which was just some disciple named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who wrote in the corner over here. We already went over that one. And not only does the evidence strongly suggest that that's not the case, even the Gospels and Acts themselves, the five books there, don't even make that claim. They don't, they don't claim to be written by that individual. They don't claim to be an eyewitness. And even the text within it suggests that it could not have been that individual. And it had to be at a later period of time. Uh, and also, like I mentioned with Acts, Acts is whoever authored Luke authored Acts. Okay, Acts is in essence Luke part two. Um, it was both written in the mid-90s by the same author within a couple years of each other. And the book of Acts was intentionally written to fill in that gap of time after Jesus' crucifixion and to describe the after events and Paul's conversion. That's the, the, the pressure to write Acts was because of that reason. Uh, there was too big of a gap of period of time there. So now that we have identified when the Gospels were written, and again, this is all based on strong, strong evidence. And Theologians and scholars both agree, for the most part, that these around these times are the dates that were given uh, that the Gospels were written. <clears throat> okay, so this is a lifetime later after the supposed events that they're talking about. Also, you must look at one more uh, uh, caveat to that: is there are many writings within the Gospels that, if you're going to try to use the fundamentalist view as well, even if that's not debunked enough for you, then there are many areas within the Gospels where there's nobody around to write. Take, for example, when Jesus is in the wilderness and the devil took him to the highest point to see all the kingdoms of the earth, okay? Because they believe the earth is flat at that time. Well, who's writing this? There's nobody around to witness any of this if you're believing someone's over here in the corner writing it down. Uh, or when Jesus is at the Garden of Gethsemane, same thing. He's praying to the Father while his disciples are sleeping. There's nobody around to write anything. So, you know, use some common sense there as well. But the truth of the matter is, the epistles were written in the 50s by Paul. That explains why he knows nothing about the life of Jesus. He writes nothing. The only thing he wrote in his epistles that made it to the Gospels was the Eucharist. Okay? And it's really easy to understand why when you understand Paul was from Tarsus. Tarsus was the birthplace of the mystery Roman pagan religion of Mithraism. <laughs> which had a Eucharist of themselves uh, that go back to 30 BCE. So this was something Paul was very familiar with. And if you notice, though, Paul's description in his epistles are much plainer. By the time you get to the Gospels, it's much more elaborated. Uh, they, they enhance the story. They add some details. It's longer, uh, which is, is psychology. We understand that that is what's expected. So Paul's epistles are written in the 50s. Mark to John, the Gospels was 75 to 105, with Acts right there in the mid, uh, mid-90s, around the time of Luke. <clears throat> okay? So now that we've identified that, and, it, and how it, it, it evidence shows that it couldn't have been the fundamentalism view and, uh, of the you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were disciples who just wrote, wrote what was going down. So now we next need to look at something I usually claim, and it's mainly by default, and it's not something I'm. It's not something that I really am a, a, a big believer in, and that is when I say that it's written by Hellenized Jews. All right, so I'll say this a lot in the videos because it's really the best answer we have because we don't know who wrote the Gospels. Okay, so I've I've been under the belief that it's been it was written by Hellenized Jews. What is a Hellenized Jew? First of all. Hellenized Jews is, they're Jewish people, 
Okay, they're 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 sound in Judaism. Their nationality is Jewish, but they were born in a Greek world. Okay, they were born under Greek philosophy, Greek literature, Greek stories. They were infiltrated with Greek ideas, not just themselves, but a few generations before them were the same way. They they were born in a Hellenistic world, and that's where Christianity was born into. So these Hellenized Jews were the sect that went off and wrote the, the new, uh, majority of the New Testament. Take, for example, I'll give you an example, like a, a modern-day uh, Jewish person. If you take a modern-day Jewish person that, lives, let's say, has been born and raised in Jerusalem, and a, a modern-day Jewish person that has been born and raised in New York City, and the last couple of generations before him were born and raised in New York City, <clears throat> they're both Jewish. They're both sound in Judaism. But the New York Jew is going to have a little bit different philosophical views than, than the, 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 uh, the one from Jerusalem. They're going to be a little more progressive in some ideas. This is evident everywhere you look. And there's a lot of Jews that live in New York because that's the culture they're surrounded by. It's the culture they're born into and their father was born into and their grandfather was born into. Well, it's the same way in the first century and maybe even more so. These Jews were born in the Greek world. They were infiltrated by Greek ideas, Greek philosophies, Greek stories. Uh, and if you read my uh, book or watch my video series, Homer versus New Testament, uh, or Gospel of Dionysus, it is it, it leaves no doubt about it that all the stories that you find in the four Gospels and Acts were simply derived from Greek literature. I mean, that's where they took it from. They took these ideas and these stories and put them in the Gospels. And then just added the act of mimesis, where they made the Jesus character a better version uh, than Hector or or Odysseus or Dionysus in Greek literature. It, it becomes this evidently true at that point. And you would have to be intellectually dishonest to, to disagree with that if you've actually read and uh, watched those videos. So that's what I mean by Hellenized Jew. But you start thinking, how could a Hellenized Jew write the Gospels and Acts? Understand something. The original Hebrew scriptures, what you call the Old Testament today, was wholeheartedly written in Hebrew. We know this obviously from even the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, which are manuscripts of uh, Hebrew scriptures of all the books except Esther that dated before the uh, Common Era. You know, some of them 50, 100, even 200, even, even close to 250 BCE, all of it written in Hebrew. Okay. Uh, which was the ancient language of the Jews. The problem is, when you get into the New Testament, it's written in Greek. Greek is a completely different language than Hebrew. First thing you need to ask yourself is, is, is the Jews of the first century, what did they speak? They spoke Aramaic. Aramaic is a sister language to Hebrew. It's just an evolved dialect, basically. But they spoke Aramaic. The Jews were not fluent in Greek. Understand that. But before we even get into that, we must understand and take a look at the educational system in the first century. It is nothing like the 20th and 21st century uh, that we're used to. <clears throat> Today, reading and writing literacy is, is almost a given trait. Almost everyone is literate. It's very few examples that aren't. That's not how it was in the first century. Based on many historical pieces of evidence, first century Palestine, only around 10% of the population were literate in their own language. That's key, in their own language. And a big part of that 10%, though, could not read and write, meaning do both. you got to understand, in first century, reading and writing were two different studies. They were two different talents. It's not like today where when you read, you pretty much learn how to write. They kind of they kind of go together. Back then, they were two completely things. The majority of the literate ones could read but couldn't write. Uh, overall, around 10% of the Palestinian population were literate in their own language. But only about 3% could actually write in their own language. The other 7% could only read. However, and this, ob and this also... The ones that were literate were usually only your rich and powerful, your wealthy, the ones that could afford an education, uh, your, your, your laity, your, uh, your fisherman, your average person was not literate at all. Your, your average Jew had no literacy whatsoever, even in their own language. Okay. 
But it gets worse. Understand that the New Testament, mainly we're talking about Gospels and Acts here, was written in Greek. And this is evidently true because every single manuscript we have from early on is written in Greek. Um, <clears throat> so this isn't even an argument. This is evidently true. So what you have to believe is that these Jews wrote the New Testament in Greek, a different language than what they spoke. Now understand that in, in first century Palestine, when we mentioned the 10% were literate, what was the percentage of people that were literate in a second language, meaning bilingual? They were literate in a language other than their own. It was considerably less than 1%. It was around 0.7% of the Roman population were literate in their own or in a different language. But again, that doesn't mean they could read and write in a different language. It was only around 0.1% were literate to be able to read and write in a different language and other, other than their own. That is amazing. There is just no literacy in the first century hardly. So again, how did Jews who spoke Aramaic write fluent Greek? Uh, that, that, that's a big, big problem. Um, now, understand too the difference between the Gospels and the Epistles. The Epistles are letters. They're letters to churches or their ideas or instructions. Uh, that is much different than the Gospels. The Gospels are not only longer, for the most case, but also the Gospels are constructed stories. This is much more difficult to write than, let's say, an epistle of Paul. That is a major thing to understand. So we need to look here, and I've done this uh, research myself. We need to look to see if there's any examples in the first or even early second century of somebody writing in a different language in their own uh, uh, and being literate. And there's only two examples, okay? Both of these examples was from a ruler or a power in the first century. Um, uh, and what they wrote was a bill of receipt, okay? Somebody bought something or, or whatnot, and it was a bill of receipt, all right? It was very short, less than a paragraph, okay? There is absolutely, and that's completely different, of course, than what you find in the Gospels. The Gospels are not like one little paragraph of a saying where you can maybe muster through it. The Gospels are constructed stories throughout. It would take a very, very well-educated person in that language, a master in that language, to be able to construct stories the way that the Gospel authors did. Okay, so... There is absolutely no example of, of anybody able to fluently write in a different language in their own in a story situation like the Gospels we see. Now, I want to look at some rebuttals here with this. Is, is Some people will say, well, maybe a disciple, maybe Gospel of Matthew, maybe whoever the author was who was Jewish, maybe he just used a secretary or a scribe to write for him. The problem with this claim is, first of all, this claim is not made in the Gospels. So you're basically just asserting this without any textual evidence. Nowhere in the Gospels does it make that claim. So you're just falsely asserting this in hope to save this uh, idea. But the Gospels never make that claim. So that one doesn't do us any good. And not only that, but it doesn't matter because the second problem is even greater. Even if he did have a, a scribe or a secretary. Uh, which again, it doesn't make that claim. But even if he did, here's the biggest problem. If you are Jewish, and again, we've already went through the numbers of how they could actually, how can they write the Gospels? When they get a lot of their doctrines, when they get a lot of their stories, uh, and they can reconstruct it, they've taken it from what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures of that time. Understand, they use what they call the Greek Septuagint, which was a Greek translation of the Old Testament. That is where they got a lot of the stories from that you find in the Gospels. So the author would still, of the, uh, the author of the Gospel itself, would still need to be extremely knowledgeable and literate in, their, in, the, in Greek because he would have to construct stories out of the Greek Septuagint to redefine and retell in the story in the gospel. You, you understand? So a secretary doesn't do any good in that regard. No matter how you look at it, the author had to be well-educated and extremely fluent in Greek. But again, the problem is 
the Hellenized Jews, although they were Hellenized, none of them actually were literate in Greek, especially literate enough to write fluent stories in Greek. Again, there's no single example in the first or second century of anybody outside of their own language uh, being able to write literacy uh, or literally through a, um, uh, a story format that like you see in the Gospels. It just could not have been a Jewish sect that did this. Um, and that's where the problem really starts to rise there. Another rebuttal, though, which is really far-fetched, is somebody may say, well, maybe God just guided the pen of the author and just the author didn't know what he was writing. God, just, The Holy Ghost just guided the pen. The problem with this, again, is there's nowhere in the Gospels that make that claim. So, again, you're trying to assert something that's just simply not there uh, just to try to save an idea. The second problem with that is you're going against Ackman's razor, which is a scientific law that states that the most plausible answer is usually correct. You're basically going, you're eliminating all the naturalistic explanations and going straight to the supernatural. When even theologians agree, you have to do a, a, a backwards. You have to do it the other way around. If something can be explained naturalistically, you don't need a supernatural explanation. Uh, let me give you an example. It's like if you came home from work today. And you walked in your house and you're like, whoo, it's kind of cold in here. And you notice the air conditioner set at 66, okay? What are you going to think? Oh, God must have opened my doors today and blew in cold air. That's why it's cold. No, of course you're not going to do that. You're going to use Ackman's razor. The most plausible answer is you left the AC down pretty low. That's why it's cold in your house. That's what I mean when I say Ackman's razor law. So that, that rebuttal is, is kind of embarrassing. And the gospel authors don't even make that claim anyways. So again, how could it be the Hellenized Jews if, again, only 10% of Palestine were literate in their own language? And not even and a lot of those could not read and write, do both. Less than 1% of the Palestinian population were literate in a language other than their own. And again, that's usually only the rich and powerful. But to be able to actually read and write, do both, and do it fluently in a different language other than your own, you're talking around 0.1% of the Palestinian population. Again, there's only two examples of this even occurring, and both of them were by very powerful, well-educated men, and it was a bill of receipt. Again, less than a paragraph long. So again, how could it be Hellenized Jews? Uh, that is a problem there. And then your last op op option here is that the Gospels and Acts were written at a later time by Greek-speaking Gentiles. Now, this fits the evidence because they would be fluent in Greek, okay? But see, this, this doesn't work with the theology of Christianity because they need this to be Jews <clears throat> because the whole core idea is that the New Testament is a fulfillment of the law and the prophets of the old. So this would have to be Jewish men that wrote the gospels. It can't be Greek speaking Gentiles or the whole religion crumbles. Uh, you know, I mean, all you got to do is look at Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses one through four. You know, it, it speaks about if a prophet rises up amongst the midst of you and speaks uh, in the name of the Lord and does miracles and wonders. And these miracles and wonders even come to pass. If what he teaches differs from what your fathers, your Jewish fathers, knew, he is to be rejected. Well, the Gospels are written by Gentile, Greek-speaking Gentiles. Then this is completely different than what the Jewish, this ain't even about the Jewish fathers. These aren't even Jews themselves. So the whole thing collapses. So Christianity needs these men that wrote the Gospels to be Jewish. Um, and I'm not saying that it was Greek-speaking Gentiles that wrote the Gospels. I'm just saying that it fits, the evidence fits more clearly in that regard. Uh, but how could it be the Jews again? Uh, the Jews, again, were not literate in Greek. Uh, this is a quandrum that has no escape in this. But I hope this video showed you that, it's a little longer I wanted it to be, but hopefully it showed you that the gospel authors were not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's an easy one to get away from. But was it Hellenized Jews, which I still kind of lean towards? How they were able to overcome, I have no idea. Or was it Greek-speaking Gentiles? We may never know. Um, and again, if anyone ever says they know who wrote the Gospels, they're lying. We may be able to identify a type of sect that more than likely wrote the Gospels, but not an individual. 
All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know where to reach me. Until next time, thank you very much.